Tribalism is the most powerful force in the world today. It's more powerful than atomic bombs, more powerful than the entire military might of every superpower that exists. Tribalism is about belonging. It's about family, teams, neighborhood. It's about culture. Tribalism is when one group says we are us and you are them. Everyone here belongs to hundreds of different tribes. Every organization is a tribe. The stronger your tribe is, the stronger your brand will be. The stronger your brand, the stronger your tribe will be. The most powerful leadership is tribal leadership. You can only lead a team of maybe 12 people at the most, and even Jesus found that hard. He lost one. <laughs> but you can lead a tribe of millions. You can lead a tribe of 288,000 employees marching in step together with common values and vision. So tribalism is extremely important for the future and it's connected with emotion. And you see it in the football pitch. As I say, you see it in brands, marketing and affinity groups. And when you have contrasting wealth between the very wealthiest tribes and the poorest tribes, you surely are looking at future trouble. And those contrasts are getting greater inside countries as well as between them. Some of the greatest contrasts I have ever seen have been in Mumbai, where you will find uh, apartments that are more expensive than Manhattan or London, and in the shadow of those apartments, you will find people living in tents. In Africa, uh, we see tribalism. In every part of the world, we see tribalism. We see tribalism at the moment causing great tension within Nigeria and affecting global oil production. I once asked one of the largest oil companies this question, how many people would it take in Nigeria to shut down the whole of Nigeria's oil production for 10 years? How many people? Their answer was 50. 50 people with machine guns, cigarette lighters and bottles of petrol to ignite the oil that comes out of a hole. Last week, 60% of the entire oil production of Nigeria was stopped. Uh, a few months ago, we had um, a big bomb uh, blast that was prevented in Saudi Arabia that would have knocked out 25% of that country's entire oil production for a short period of time, refining production. So tribalism is very important and asymmetric risks are very important. When small numbers of people who belong to one tribe can create huge influence, mainly emotional influence, through their impact on another tribe. And uh, the power of technology must not be underestimated in this process. Um, in, uh, in some parts of the world, SMS is regularly turned off in some towns and cities when governments fear there is about to be an uprising. And I work a lot with telco companies, so they are very sensitive to this. Um, and uh, it happens more often than you think. Because SMS, a single SMS message multiplied through a million phones in the course of 35 minutes could be enough to start a new tribal movement. We live in a tribal world where people communicate more and more within their own tribes virtually. YouTube is a wonderful example. Who here has watched a YouTube video in the last um, month? Who here has put up a YouTube video in the last year? Okay. So YouTube is the largest TV station in the world, and I met the person who started it. He's still in a state of shock. He started, with two com he started at 25 years old with two computers. Um, two years later, he was given a check by Google for 1.6 billion dollars. Extraordinary. Why? Because he's become good at connecting tribes using video. Tribes are very important uh, in uh, marketing and advertising. Imagine that you are going to stay in uh, the, the Hilton Hotel in London and you type the name of the Hilton in because uh, you don't know the website and, and Google produces you Number one uh, the listing is TripAdvisor, and the first two listings are the most beautiful hotel, the second is the most terrible one. Um, on the right-hand side, uh, by the way, TripAdvisor is so huge as a collection of comments 
by people who have been to the hotel that it knocks the Hilton website off altogether. So the only way Hilton can get your attention is by paying for an advertisement up here. So you have three choices, my friends, and I am going to benchmark your reactions against the global international executive community. I want to know this. Which button did you press on first? You want to know the truth about the Hilton. Do you go first to the official website? Some of you are laughing. Put your hands up if you will go first to the official website to discover the truth about the Hilton Hotel and everything you need to know. Put your hands up if you go first to the wonderful news about how fantastic it is because you want to encourage yourself before going. Put your hands up. <laughs> is there really nobody? A oh, one. Thank you good, very much. Good. Good. Thank you. Good. 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 There is always one. Put your hands up if you go first to the story about the rats in the kitchen. <laughs> My friends, I said if you remember nothing else, think about emotion. And what you've told me again is that you are very emotional people. And uh, what you've told me, this is what you have told me, is that in your companies, in your nations, in your communities, in your academic disciplines, the truth is, advertising is dead in the online world. Let me say that again. You have shown me advertising is dead. Building brands is over. It is finished. Imagine that you are the marketing director of the Hilton, and you have a budget of $500 million a year to spend on advertising. What happens is, you put adverts on the TV, in the newspapers, and everything. And what happens then? People like me start typing Hilton into Google. What a disaster. Because if every time someone types Hilton into Google, they hear stories about rats, it would be better to spend nothing on advertising at all. I'm sure you agree. And the fact is that you have told me that you have zero trust. We talked about trust earlier. You have zero trust in the Hilton. And probably if there was another outbreak, if there was an outbreak of bird flu or something like that, you would tell me you had zero trust in the government's health officer. You have zero trust in politicians. You don't trust anyone, is what you're telling me. Basically, when it comes to promoting things like that, the people you trust are people who've been there, done it, tasted it, or lived in that room, or ate in that kitchen, right? That's what you're telling me. By the way, who wrote this comment. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it was a member of the family of the chef in the kitchen. <laughs> uh, who wrote the story about the rats? Competitor, thank you. So you have shown me once again that when it comes to pressure, where am I going to stay, you, like everyone else, behave totally irrationally. <laughs> because you are willing to trust some stupid person who has paid someone else to put up a false comment more, more than the official organization. I'm just the same. And what it shows us is the power of the online community and why it is that your future, I don't care if you're in private banking with Credit Suisse, I don't care if you're running an MBA program at your business school, I don't care if you're one of the leading immunologists in your university, the fact is, that your reputation will be built, not in future, by the research papers you publish, by the products that you sell. It'll be driven by this kind of comment, YouTube clips, and, uh, and, and web community, and that is the future. Now, the good news is this. If you are a smaller organization, if you are an exporter in a relatively small company in some part of the world that no one normally thinks of going to for your product, the good news is that you win. Why? Because if, my friends, you deliver every time on time, you pay attention to your customer, you, you, uh, you really love the people that you work with, you treat them decently and with respect, then I promise you, because these things are so rare in the international world, your light will shine like a bright sun and your business will do well.